Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to take the next step in our discussion of how we can write the simple C-sharp application that takes streaming video, which you see here in the box on the left, and process it to detect moving objects. And you can see here we have a sunny day, and on the right is the result of what we talked about in the last video, which is called the background subtractor. And the background subtractor, as you can see, does a whole lot of stuff here. We've got some pixels that are going from black to suddenly they're becoming gray or white. What we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to take the next step after discussing the background subtractor, and we're going to show how to take the results of the background subtractor and do a little bit more processing so we don't get all of the, uh, like what you see up here, you see the little pixels turning white because of leaves blowing. And you can see when we had clouds coming over, we got different colored gray pixels. And over here, you can see we've got some sun over here. Leaves moving because of the sun. We don't want the shadows. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to talk about what are the things that we need to remove from this background subtractor so that we can actually get our results down to just useful moving objects like vehicles and people and stuff that we really want to see, not all this other stuff that's just clouds and sun and moving leaves. So let's take a look at some of the things we need to look at um, to figure out how we can get rid of much of this stuff. So now let's take a look at some of the things that may affect your resulting uh, background subtractor results showing motion in your uh, subsequent frames. Now, some of the things that you may encounter, which I'll call irrelevant or random noise, being detected by the background subtractor is, for example, clouds or sun. Um, cloud comes over and all the pixels get darker, or sun comes out and the pixels get brighter. Again, moving shadows caused by sun and clouds. And then there's the irrelevant moving objects, leaves and birds. So yeah, it is moving objects, but you really don't care about them. So you might think if there's some way to get rid of the... Um, these irrelevant small moving objects. Then you got to worry about reflections and glare. Like if you're look, your camera's looking through a glass, a dirty glass or something, you might get uh, glare and reflections that cause the captured image to get much brighter. So you got to worry about that. Then camera vibrations. If a vehicle passes by and vibrates the camera, of course, the image is going to vibrate, which means the individual pixels are going to change color. So you got to worry about that. And another thing we're going to talk about is camera auto exposure. And we'll talk about what that is if you're not familiar with auto exposure, but that can also cause your pixel values to change when you don't really want them to. So let's take a look at some examples of some of these so we can start to think about, well, these are the things that I don't really want. If I'm going to be trying to detect moving objects like vehicles or people, all this other stuff is irrelevant. What methods are there that we can use to take our background subtractor results and get rid of all this stuff so we can focus more on the important moving objects? So here is one frame of a video showing a car moving through the scene. And you can see it's a white car. And as we talked about before, the change is going to be between subsequent frames is now most of these pixels that were previously just a gray road are now going to be bright white. Not all of them, but most of them. So what's going to happen is we should expect this to be detected as changing pixel color. So we should see the outline of a car in the background subtractor. And here is the results of the frame from the background subtractor. Now, yes, we did get a change in the pixel values where the car is, but notice we also got a change in all of these pixels surrounding it. So you might think, well, wait a minute, why are we getting all these pixel values changing when there was no change here? All we had was a car coming through. Well, that I think is one of the issues we discussed. And I think this is a result of the camera auto exposure. Now, what happened in this, in this background subtractor to cause this? Well, um, if you're familiar with cameras and auto exposure, in the olden days, cameras had irises, what are called irises, which is basically the hole that you let light through that goes to the camera sensor. And you can open or close that hole to allow more or less light to go to the sensor. 
an auto exposure is something that measures this image and measures the amount of light coming in and senses, hey, is this amount of light too bright for my sensor? It's going to cause things to blow out. Or is it too dark? And if it's too bright or too dark, I can adjust that iris and allow more or less light in. So I think what happened here was we got a bright white car coming through and the logic in the camera, in our case, the smartphone camera, said, hey, that image is getting brighter because it saw these white pixels and said, I need to crank down the size of the iris, effectively letting less light in, which means that all of the pixels in the image are going to get darker, right? Because you're letting less light in to account for this bright car. So all of these pixels surrounding it are going to get darker. And one of the th challenges in understanding how this background subtractor work is understanding the logic or the algorithm it uses. So I think one of the aspects of the algorithm used by the background subtractor we're using is it will not only tell you if the pixel colors change, it will also let you know, did they get brighter or did they get darker? So I think what happened in this case was the car went by, a bright car went by, the auto exposure said, hey, the picture is generally getting brighter because of all these bright pixels now. So I'm going to close down the iris, let less light in, which means all of the pixels surrounding the car will now look darker than they did before. The cars got brighter, but this gets darker because now you're letting less light in to accommodate this bright car. So what this algorithm has done is it said, okay, these pixels, these light gray pixels got darker than they were before because we have let less light in. So we are going to say that these new pixel values are going to go in a range from about 0 to 128. Again, these are pixel values from 0 to 255. So it's going to encode the information about whether it got darker or brighter by saying, okay, if it got darker, I'm going to give it a pixel value between 0 and 128. But if it got brighter, like this car got brighter, those pixels got brighter, I'm going to give it pixel values between 128 and 255. So I think that's what's happening with this auto exposure. All of these pixels changed because we changed the iris. We let less light in and these pixels got darker. And now the algorithm is encoding the fact that it got darker by saying, okay, I'm going to give it a, a light gray rather than a bright white pixel value. So now you can see that you can get a whole bunch of light gray pixels um, denoting basically a change in color where there was actually no motion. It was basically the response of the auto exposure. So you can start to say, hey, I need to have some way to get rid of these low value pixels um, and maintain this bright white. The auto exposure and other things will cause the same issue. For example, if I have clouds coming over, the pixels are going to get darker, which means it's going to assign it new pixel values in this background subtractor that are going to be light gray or dark gray. But if it gets brighter, it's going to be like this car and it's going to have bright white values. So we can start to say, hey, it would be nice if there was some way to get rid of the low value pixels, maybe using like a threshold and says, hey, if the pixel values are light gray or dark gray, I don't want them. But if they're bright white, then I want them. So let's keep that in mind. That's just one of the things you might see. So threshold will take pixel value changes between frames must be above a threshold like we showed before. And again, it might remove some light shadows. So for example, if a, a car passes by and it's got shadows underneath, those pixels are getting darker, which means it's going to be a um, it's going to replace those pixel values in the background subtractor with a dark gray or a light gray. So this threshold can get rid of uh, hopefully auto exposure when the image gets brighter or shadows, those kind of things. So threshold is going to be something we're going to want to look at. Another thing is what you can see here where we've got this bright sunlight peeking through and moving through the scene. And here's a house across the street. But you can see all of these leaves, all these little dots are leaves that are suddenly getting bright sunlight on them. 
So there's a lot of that stuff, and this could be, you know, a, a bird flying by or any little tiny pixel changes. These are really kind of irrelevant to us, and we don't care about them. So another thing we might want to look at is not only with a threshold, but is there some way to get rid of little individual or little tiny groups of pixels that really don't mean much? I mean, if you could have a car go by, it's going to have a lot of pixels, but you know, birds and leaves and that kind of thing, we can get rid of those. So in the world of OpenCV and EMGUCV, unfortunately, they're using, as you often see in the technical world, some really poor descriptive terminology. Uh, but basically, it's, called, it's a noise filter, but they call it morphology. And it really doesn't help at all to explain what it is, but basically, it's a way to go through your image and to remove any noisy little pixels or groups of pixels. It's a way to remove random noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an example of a very small image with two random pixels, and we're going to see how can we use this noise filter, uh, what they call morphology, to remove it. Now, there's a number of different algorithms you can choose, but this kind of gives you, gives you a general idea of how this is going to work. So if we have like a pixel here surrounded by black pixels, um, you might think, well, if there's some way you can detect all of the pixel values around each pixel, then you can say, well, if all of these pixel values are black, maybe I don't want this here. I just want to convert this to black because it's of no use. If I can consider this image as just a matrix of pixel values, I can go through each pixel and say, hey, if I've got a white pixel, um, I need to check to see if all the pixel values are black. If so, I'm just going to convert this to black and move on. So one way to do it would be to have a like a three by three matrix traveling through your image. And it's basically going to check to see if the middle pixel is white and all are black around it. We can just convert that to black and move on. So that's kind of the general concept behind this noise filter, what they call morphology. And again, there's multiple ways to do it, but it's one thing you can do to remove random noise. You can also expand this instead of like a three by three matrix. You can have five by five and get rid of if you have multiple pixels that are white next to each other. Um, but that's up to you what you want to do. But that's basically the concept behind it. Now, another thing we can look at um, in this image, you can see we've got a road going across and in the back here. And we've got a lot of trees over in this corner that might have a lot of noise in them as the leaves rustle and light falls on the house. And we really don't care about that. We just want to look at what's on the road in terms of vehicles or people. So we would like to get rid of, you know, maybe an entire section of the image and not even worry about it so that we don't have to detect moving objects. So here is, for example, one of the background subtractor results. And if we really don't want anything up here, like this light shining on the house and all these leaves changing color, what we can do is we can add some logic into our algorithm that says, OK, I'm going to define a vertical and horizontal line set of lines where um, we check to see if the object is down here and to the left. If so, it's a real object because it's on the road. But if it's above this horizontal and to the right of this vertical, we're just going to ignore all this stuff. So we can add um, what are called limit lines and say, you know, anything that are on this side of the limit lines, just ignore it. So it might save us some time and some um, incorrect logic detection. So now that we know some of the concepts, the threshold and the noise and the limit lines, um, let's take a quick look at how we've implemented this. You can see we've got some leaves moving and I can select noise filter and much of that will be gone depending on how we set it. And we're going to see later on that you can uh, set the number of pixels that you compare. But noise filter with it on and with it off, you can see it makes a big difference in detecting the, the moving leaves and that kind of thing. And we can also select threshold, which basically says only show me results from the background subtractor 
where the pixel values are above a certain threshold. So we can select that and it gets rid, you can't really see it, but it gets rid of some of the, the low value shadows and that kind of thing. And then also limit lines where we can select and we've got some track bars. We can move that for the limit lines and we've defined it. So up in this right hand corner, we're not going to see any objects detected. Um, and it's only going to be in this L-shaped area where we're going to detect objects. So that's about it for this one. So if you're liking these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.